there. Before we start this lesson, can you subscribe to my videos, like the videos and share it with your friends. In this video, we are going to solve Cambridge IGCSE paper to extend it, variant 21, October, November 2019, question number 19 onwards. Question number 19 is a matrix question. Matrix has been removed from your syllabus. So we don't need to solve this question. Let's move on to the next one. Question number 20. Let's read the, what has been given to us. The probability that the school bus is late is 9 over 10. If the school bus is late, the probability that SEP travels on the bus is 15 over 16. If the school bus is on time, the probability that SEP travels on the bus is 3 over 4. Find the probability that SEP travels on the bus. We'll make a tree diagram. The probability that the school bus is late is 9 over 10. So late is 9 over 10. On time will be, remember that when you have these branches, when you add them up, it should equal to 1. To find on time, you have to subtract 1 minus 9 over 10. And that will give you 1 over 10. Then the next information we have is, if the school bus is late, the probability that SEP travels on the bus is 15 over 16. So if it is late, he travels on the bus is 15 over 16. Then what will be that he does not travel on the bus. Again, we are going to have 1 minus 15 over 16. That will give you 1 over 16. The next information we have, if the school bus is on time, we are looking at this branch. SEP travels on the bus is 3 over 4. So if it, the bus is on time, he travels on the bus is 3 over 4. And then not travel on the bus will be 1 minus 3 over 4, which will give us 1 over 4. So now we have got our probabilities and we need to find the probability that SEP travels on the bus. The probability that SEP travels on the bus is when it is late and he travels on the bus. So you have late and goes on the bus. If you move to the branches this way, you multiply. And when you change the branch, you add. On time, and he goes by bus. So we are, what is late? 9 over 10. Goes by bus, 15 over 16. On time is 1 over 10 and goes by bus 3 over 4. So this will give us 147 over 160. Question number 21 is a transformation question. The first part describe fully single transformation that maps shape T onto shape A. We can see that they are the same sizes. The shape has been shifted. So when there is a shift in the shape, that means it's a translation. And we have to find the column vector of the shape. This is a form of the column vector. The top number represents x and the down number y. If your x is positive, it means you shift it to the right, and if your y is positive, you shift up. If you shift left, your x is negative, and if you shift down, your y is negative. Choose a point. So I'm choosing this point here, and we have to see how it reaches here. It went one to the left. So the translation for x is negative one. And it shifted down by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because it went down, 
the y transformation translation is negative 5. Next one, on the grid reflect shape T in the line y is equal to x. To draw the line y is equal to x, what does that tell us? y is equal to x means when y is 1, x is 1. When y is 2, x is 2. So plot a few points and draw the line. Here when x is 3, y is 3. When x is 6, y is 6. When x is 8, y is 8. And now we have to reflect the shape in this line. So this is one square up like this. So we'll go one square this side. We count the number of squares. 1, 2, 3. Draw the line here. 1, 2, 3. Then this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So we'll make a line with four squares here. Join this together. And that is our shape. Question number 22. A pipe is completely full of water. Water flows through the pipe at a speed of 1.2 meter per second into a tank. The cross section of the pipe has an area of 6 square centimeter. Calculate the number of liters of water flowing into the tank in one hour. So let's write down the information. Always write down what has been given to you. Speed is 1.2 meter per second and area is 6 square centimeter. We need to find the distance. The reason we need to find the distance is we want to find the number of liters of water. Number of liters of water, whenever you have to find, you need to first find your volume. For volume, we have different formulas depending on the shape and all. But the basic one which applies to everything is volume is equal to area of cross section multiply by the length or the height whatever has been given to us and that is the reason to find the length we need to find the distance distance is equal to speed multiplied by time speed is 1.2 meter per second and time is in one hour so one hour first we will change the speed into centimeter to do that we have to multiply by 100 and to change the hour into seconds because we have seconds here we have to multiply by 3600 that is 60 minutes and in each minute there are 60 seconds so 60 multiplied by 60 put this in the calculator and you will get 4, 3, 2, 0, 0 centimeter. So this is our distance. What is the area? 6. What is the length? 4, 3, 2, 0, 0. When you multiply this, you will get 2, 5, 9, 2, 0, 0, 0. Because it's a volume, it's a cubic centimeter. To change a cubic centimeter into liters, one liter is equal to 1000 cubic centimeter. So the number of liters will be 259200 divided by 1000. And we will get 2592 liters. There are a lot of things that you needed to know for this question. Write down on a paper all the important things and keep it in your mind. Question number 23 is a set question. The universal set is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Set A and set B has been given to us. Complete each of the following statements. A intersection B. Intersection means which is in set A and in set B. Which number do we have? We have 2 and 5. So that's our answer. 2 and 5. Then we have n, b. n, if we have outside the bracket, it means we count the number of elements in b. 1, 2, and 3. The next one, 
set 0, 4, 6 is equal to let's look here we had set 0, 4, 6 this is B and this is our universal set if you remove from B 1, 2 and 5 we are left with 0, 4 and 6 I will draw a Venn diagram to explain to you. This is set A, this is set B, and 3 is not in set A or B. So 0, 4, 6 is this part. Whenever you have only A, that is the only A, not the overlapping part of B, the answer is A intersection, not B. And 2, 4, A. 2 and 4 are in A. So 2, 4, these elements are a subset of A. Question number 24 is a function question. A, find f of g of 3. There are two ways to solve this. One, you can first find f of g. It means in place of x in f, we are going to put the g. So, f of g of x will be 3, 2 to the power of x minus 3. And f of g of 3 will be in place of x, put 3. And this will give you 19. The other way is, first find g of 3. So 2 to the power of 3 is 8. And then substitute this in f8. So 3 times 8 minus 5. You need to know how to do this method because many times you will not have a number. You might just have x. Next, find the f inverse x. To find the inverse, we write down this equation. But in place of f of x, we are going to write y. y is equal to 3x minus 5. We have to make x the subject. So y plus 5 is equal to 3x. This is a multiply. When I bring the 3 to the other side, it's going to be a divide. After this step, in place of x, we write f inverse x. And in place of y, we write x. This is the way to find the inverse. Question number 25 is a vector question. Let's read and write down what has been given to us. We'll start with here op is equal to p so this is equal to p and oq is equal to q so this whole line is q and this whole line is p the next part op is equal to 2 oa so the whole op is twice oa it means OA is half of P. Half P. And the other thing that is given to us is OQ is 3 times OP. The whole OQ is 3 times OP. So OP is 1 third of OA, which is 1 third Q. Okay, so this is what we have now. We need to find BA. To find BA, we are going to go through BO plus OA. OQ is like this and that was Q. And now we are finding BO. We are going the reverse direction. Therefore, the signs will change. Negative 1 over 3q plus half p. 
Next part of the question, the position vector of M. Position vector of M means we have to start from O and reach M. What has been given about M? PM is equal to MQ. It means M is the midpoint of PQ. So first, let us find PQ. To find PQ, we will use PO plus OQ. That will be negative P plus Q. So what is PM going to be? Half of PQ. I'll just put the positive in the front. Okay. And now to find the position vector, which is OM, we can pass through vector OP plus PM. OP is P and PM is Oh, I wrote here by mistake P, Q. It's Q minus P. So half Q minus P. We are going to expand the bracket. P minus half P will give us half P plus half Q. So the position vector of M is half P plus half Q. Question number 26 is a speed time graph question. Let's read the question. A car travels at 20 meter per second for 15 seconds. So this is it. Before it comes to rest by decelerating at 2.5 meter per second square. Find the total distance traveled. The total distance traveled in a speed time graph is the area under the curve. To find this area, we need to find this point here. And we can find that by uh, using the formula. You have been given deceleration. Acceleration or deceleration is equal to speed over time taken. We do not have the time. We want to find the time. So we will make time the subject. Speed over deceleration. Which is 20 divided by 2.5. And we will get the answer. 8. So it takes 8 seconds. It takes 8 seconds for the train to stop, the car to stop. So 15 plus 8 will be 23. Now that we know this value, we can find the area under the curve by using the trapezium rule. This is the trapezium rule. Half A plus B H. A and B are your parallel sides and H is your height. So let's replace the values. Half A is 23 and B is 15 and height is 20. So we got 380. The total distance traveled is 380 meters. This brings us to the end of this video. I hope I've been able to help you. Kindly share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed as yet, do subscribe, like the video. Thank you for watching.